Our dear Heavenly Father, O Lord, we seek thee this evening to ask for thy care and thy blessing over all the procedures this evening. We have been, pardon me, the governing body of the city who are given very and many different kinds of responsibility. They are chosen to, uh, to establish the best uh, services for a city our size and at the same time to Expend only that which is essential to maintain them and to provide for all of the citizens of our city. We live in a day today in which there are multitudes of necessities and of necessities, both locally and also on our state level and on our federal level. The, we, we must depend upon those who have the, these many responsibilities that fall upon <coughs> this diverse group. May they be placed in achieving that which is necessary for the government, the care, the many conveniences, the many necessities in which we share. And in addition to this, Heavenly Father, we cannot help but feel great sorrow and distress for those who from time to time fall into great trouble because of the climate, the weather, or the circumstances. And we think of those of South Carolina, especially whose homes have been demolished and destroyed. Also, others in New England as well, as well and in addition to other parts of our country. And we ask thy strength and thy blessing upon those who have been elected to cover us and to direct us. And we thank you as we turn our trust, our hopes, and our petitions unto thee during these times of great need. As we ask, O oh Lord, uh, in the name of, thy, of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen.
All right, consent agenda. Approved minutes for regular meeting of 9-15-2015. Approved minutes for special meeting of 9-22-2015. Approved appropriation ordinance 10-06-2015 in the amount of $109,460.97. Is there any discussion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Chief Salem. I'd like to ask uh, permission to uh, replace Sergeant Rudy's body armor. Um, as we discussed in the past, they, they have a five-year guarantee and his is out uh, as of September of uh, this year. Um, so I would like to request seven hundred sixty-nine dollars and eighty-eight cents <coughs> to replace his body armor. Regarding budget, yeah. So we have second. 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 Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed. Motion carries. If I vote. Thank you. Uh, the second thing I have, I want to discuss with you uh, the possibility of increasing my spending authority. Um, right now, it's set at 500. Um, we have what I feel are some basic business things, such as things like body armor, um, that at the $500 spending limit, we, the city wasn't providing in the past. Um, the city also was not providing a lot of the um, equipment that we buy to outfit a new officer. Um, should we ever need to do that again? Um, we ran into some general maintenance issues as far as vehicles, whether it's replacing tires and things like that that are also over $500. Um, so I would ask that you would uh, consider uh, bumping that up to 1000 um, to allow some of that business to be done without having to get consent. Uh, I just assume we would 500 If he's got something over 500 he'd bring it to council. I think we should give him a little bit of latitude on this. I mean, drop it up to a thousand. Anything over that, he's going to bring it to us. I mean, it's not that big of a deal. It's just one less thing that we need to worry about. And if something does come up, well, it'll be brought up to us. <coughs> I don't have a problem with a thousand dollars, but. Move to increase Chief Sailor's spending authority from 500 to 1,000. service for her here in town, uh, Friday the 16th at the Methodist Church. I, I can't recall the exact time right now. Being, there's a lot of people in the community that were familiar with him and his wife. So uh, I told the uh, director of the academy that I would pass that along at, at this meeting and, and help get the word out to the community as well. That's all I have. Thank you. Um, since I don't see Chief Sanders... Um, open room permit period? Yeah, we've had um, at least two or three people have called to get their burn permits. Now, the way Mike explained it to me is that once you set up the burn permit, it goes for a month. So I didn't, we didn't know if you wanted to go ahead and set it up for today and end in November or if you wanted to wait for that. Pretty dry. So that, I mean, We're burning all over the countryside. Right. Yeah. Also, did Mike have an issue with it? No, I don't think so. He didn't. He just told Pam that it would be for a month from whenever you guys started it. Just do it now and go for a month, I guess. Okay. Unless he has some reason to stop it. Okay. Um, 
um, administration. Um, okay. Oh, we're here this evening, and I'd like to introduce Leslie Lomas. Leslie started working at Great Plains in August. She is also a certified grant administrator. So I have basically turned all of our grants over to Leslie so I can do more of my executive co-director job. <laughs> and so we're here to present the, the um, environmental that we had to do in regards to the CDBG grant that you guys received for your, for your sidewalks. Um, I don't know if you want to kind of talk to you about Okay. Um, basically what we had to do is we put together the information on here's what we're doing, here's the cost, you know, here's all the involvement in it. And we had to send those to some governing agencies uh, for the state, like um, Historical Society and um, KDHE and, you know, some of those. Um, we got the responses back. The only thing we did not have to do was any tribal for the Indian tribes because there's none listed for this area, so that helps. <laughs> but anyway, they, uh, we got all the responses back. And there were no responses, no clearances that are required, um, no additional items needed to to go ahead and do this project. Um, so therefore, it started out as a what they call a categorically excluded subject to, which means we would have to do the same thing, send out the, the notices, but they would have to publish it a thing in the paper and all that. Well, with no comments and everything being okay and everything following all the regulations that have to be done, there, there are no issues. That reverts this to an exempt project. So basically all we have to do is present this to you this evening. We will leave a copy of everything. Do we bring a copy? Yeah. We will have, leave a copy for, of everything with you. So if there is any comments from, you know, from your manager, some, you will have this available. It is public record. And um, we just need a couple of signatures on a couple of the pages. And then we will send it to the Department of Commerce. Once they go through that, basically what this says is once they receive this, we can start. But they will send something back just to, to notify us that, we can for sure, and so we will wait for that. Once we get that, the, the engineers can go ahead and start all the design work, and we can start um, doing the, you know, having funds towards getting bills in for it and things like that. So, basically, um, like I said, there were no adverse situations. It's all right here. I could go through the whole thing, but it could take a while. Um, but like I said, you will have a copy here in the office. So, basically what we need, I think we need, yeah. And what I'm doing is we have to send an original copy to the state, and we'll leave an original copy here, so we're asking her to sign the same thing the same forms twice. I do have one question. Uh -huh. Are we still uh, still doing a five foot sidewalk and not a six foot? You'll have to ask your engineer, to my knowledge, yes. Okay. <laughs> I, to my knowledge, there's no change in it. No, nothing changed. Because mm -hmm. okay. we okay. all said it had to be a five foot okay. sidewalk instead of six foot, correct? Mm -hmm. That's what we talked about. Yeah. Okay. I know what it is. So, yeah. You didn't talk about anything. <laughs> but, yeah, that, I mean, that's up to the engine. I mean, it'll be in the design, but to my knowledge, yes. That's it what can be a five foot sun. Mm -hmm. okay. I think so. Because that's going to cause a problem if it can be. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned, it can. You know, I don't know why it couldn't be. Yeah, I think there's two pages. They're just kind of buried in there. <laughs> and also, Don, I'd like to say it's nice to meet you. <laughs> we've talked on the phone a lot, but we've never really met. <laughs> okay. yes. And like I said, that... 
that's available for public review. It's open record. So. Okay. I had one question. Mm -hmm. I wasn't not sure whether you'd be able to answer this or not, but um, I did have a, a citizen ask me regarding the um, sidewalk. Where is it going to be located in reference to this picture right here? Um, is it going to be up against, is there going to be any space between the, um, the street and the sidewalk? Probably. I mean, whatever, whatever the city requirements are is what he's going to have to follow. Okay. So if the city requires that, then yes. Okay. Um, I'm sure that there will be. But there again, without having seen the whole design, I can't really answer that. Yeah, that's what I was wondering <laughs> if you could. Okay, well, Yeah, thank you. but I mean, whatever the city's guidelines are for sidewalks, if you have guidelines for sidewalks, then he'll have to put, he'll have to design them accordingly. So, you know, if, if the city says you have to allow so much, then that's what will have to be. Thank you. Just the city is the governing body on all of this, so whatever you guys approve is what they'll have to do. So. If, when he gets the design, he'll have to bring it to you for your approval, and if you don't approve it, he'll have to change it. So, okay. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? And this still is a 90-10. This still is a 90-10 grade. Okay. What do you mean 90-10? We got 90%. 90 90%. 90 90 no, you put up 25. You had to put in. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yes, you're right. I'm sorry. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I forgot that they were, this was a special yeah, round grant. It was 10%. <laughs> <laughs> the, the regular rounds are 25. So, yes, but the special round was 10%. And I think your share was just a year. Just, it, it was right at that point. Okay. Thank you. Uh-huh. All right. Thank you very much. Okay, so in your guys' packet on the table, uh, you guys had asked last meeting for me to check on the main entryway on fourth. So um, I've talked to Amy and, and she's here to answer some more questions if you guys have some. Basically when we talked, um, what she was waiting on was for Mel or the city to build an irrigation system. She had talked to Mel about that and he had uh, said that he would build it out of the used water parts. So she didn't want to keep going on with the planning and stuff until that irrigation system got in there. Also, she was waiting for the lights to get put in. And after talking to Jeff and Nick, they said that basically all we're waiting for is for everyone to get together and pick out the lights for Amy and her to get together. Um, in your packet, there is kind of like an itemized kind of list showing you exactly what your, you know, like the $500 went to. There's also an invoice in here that will show it for you. Um, there is a revised plan because there was a city ordinance on the fire hydrant, so one of the walls couldn't get put up. Really, um, she wanted me to make sure you guys understood that the, the Stafford County 4-H doesn't really have anything to do with this project except on like a volunteer basis, like if they volunteer to help. And really it is Grayson Collins' project. Uh, this summer, you know, like most families, people got busy and, and they just got behind and so they are trying to stay up with it as best as they can. But if you guys have any more questions, Amy and Sean are both here to, to answer those for you guys. I might get a little background on that to kind of clear that up. When uh, Jill and I were on council, we started decorating the entranceway um, by ourselves because we felt like it needed something. Um, and we just started doing that at Paul and Christmas. And then last year when 48 Hours of 4-H came up, Grayson started as a community service project, took it to the club and they agreed to do the planting on it. They did raise money for it. The $500 that the city gave to us was actually $500 that they committed to us when Jill and I were, were decorating out there for the holidays. And we asked them to just switch it over to this project. And so that's what we did. 
um, when we had our meetings, from what I understood, the city was going to put in an irrigation system and redo the lighting because they took the lighting out. So last spring, when Mel resigned and Donna resigned, there was some transition. We just kind of held off until you had someone in place to kind of do that with work with us on that. I didn't want to come and say, you promised this and we're not getting, I mean, we we were just concerned about keeping things alive that we planted. So we've been watering all that this summer and we've mulched and weeded and I will admit in September, at the beginning, end of August, beginning of September, we didn't get to it as soon as we would have liked. But um, the straw bales, the fall decorations, we do all that out of our own pocket, so none of that money came out of what's there for the landscape job. We've just been doing this all volunteer. Um, we've mowed through the summer. We weeded as best as we could. Um, the brick walls that we have to go in, we have enough money to do the north side. We're short a little bit to do the south side. We've had some issues earlier this summer. Someone had driven through some of our shrubs. We had to replace those. We pre replaced those out of our own pocket um, and not out of the money given for this project because we needed all we had. So, you know, I just want you to know that we're still working on it. It's just, it's just a few of us though. So, um, you know, that's where we're at. Um, if you would like to get with Corey, you might want to give him yeah. a little bit of time to get settled in. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> I, I but like about the plan for yeah. the irrigation <laughs> system <laughs> and um, yeah. Jeff about the lights or whatever we need to do to get them to take them care of. Yeah, that'd be great. Fine. Anybody else have anything? So appreciate your time coming in and updates. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. So like what Amy said about taking care of it, that kind of leads me to the next thing on the agenda. Um, my One of my concerns is when Grayson leaves and, and everyone gets busy, who's really going to take care of the, the entryway? Um, Barry Reagan cannot do the tree board anymore. He stepped down from doing that. They were in charge, is my understanding, they were in charge of the square of getting like the weeds over by the post office and around square so um, we started brainstorming we didn't know what you guys thought about maybe kind of coming up with a beautification committee I also I already had um, three citizens that have volunteered to be a part of that and then their main job would to help out Amy and the Collins and then help out around pulling the weeds and, and all that stuff so that's, that's just one suggestion that I had you got volunteers let them, awesome. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let them knock themselves out. <laughs> so the, the funding for the committee, would would you guys think that would come from the tree board fund? Is that where you guys want to put it? Did you guys want to establish another fund just for the beautification committee? Um, the way I understand it is that you guys would give the tree board $500 a year. And then Mel would offset what what that went over. Like if Barry needed more mulch, Mel would go get that for him and provide that to him. So is that kind of how you guys want to keep it? You guys want to do it differently? Mr. Garcia, we're going to add you here. Already? Here. <laughs> oh. Well, I was just going to stop by and talk about my indoor pool I had a couple of weeks ago. Um, nothing I can really get too upset about, but uh, we had just had an accident that happened in our basement. <clears throat> I brought it to the attention of the former city super, uh, supervisor, uh, I believe it was May 5th or 6th, in regards to a uh, small leak in, our, in, uh, in the can in the front yard. Um, <clears throat> it wasn't anything that was drastic, had drastic measures, I mean it was just a uh, um, a slow continuous leak um, and then a couple weeks ago we had uh, a little accident in our basement which caused uh, several gallons of water to come in the basement um, the only concern that I had was 
if that leak would have gotten taken care of prior to that, um, yes, we still would absorb damage, but um, not as extensive as what we had. Um, you know, the guys who worked on it did a great job getting shut off. But uh, <clears throat> and to my understanding, our bill has been estimated the last four or five months. Um, and I, I, I guess I just wanted to see what council would feel comfortable about, I mean, making it right. I mean, it wasn't so much that, uh, you know, it's, it's not totally the city's fault, but, uh, you know, I, I just believe that leak would have been taken care of, and, you know, and I know I understand the transition and that type of thing, but, um, we, you know, and, and I totally understand that, but, you know, if, we, if that could have got taken care of prior to that, it, you know, the shutoff time would have been a lot quicker and instead of having an indoor pool I might have a little small jacuzzi or something but uh, I just just wanted to see what council would feel comfortable with and I guess what I'm referencing to we did get a bill from uh, Davis Electric um, for their part in coming and, and working on it um, and I don't know LaDonna do they have a copy of that yeah. um, and then also uh, you know, possibly on the deductible for our insurance. Um, so I just wanted to ask council what, uh, I guess, get guidance on what would be uh, sufficient for, for that. So I don't know if Donna can respond from being a resident, so it's city clerk. Do you have anything, anything additional? Basically, the letter tells you guys that it took Jeff and Nick over an hour to shut the water off to our house. And, and the main cause of that was the leak from the city that didn't get fixed in the, the well. And they had to pump it out and they had to find it. Um, that, of course, caused, uh, that helped cause over 1,500 gallons of water to come into our house. And, and the main thing is, is just, you know, our kids live pretty much down in our basement. Their bedrooms are down there. The laundry's down there. So we had to move everything upstairs. We had to move it outside. We were still living half in the garage and half in our living room until um, we get it fixed. Uh, Phoenix Restoration had to come in. They had to rip up all the carpet. They had to suck it out. We had the humidifiers and the fans going. In there, couldn't use the laundry. I had the great job of going to the laundromat, but I mean, that's all we're asking is we just feel that if if the leak would have been taken care of in a timely manner, then then that that wouldn't it wouldn't have taken them an hour to shut the water off to our house. Yeah, go ahead. Remind council is kind of whenever one of these issues comes up. If you want to, you know, question for me as an attorney, we can do that in executive session. Discussion that needs to happen. <coughs> what was the trencher and all that? I mean, was that on your side or on their side or what? The, both sides. It there was damage on both sides, but the trench that had to be digged was on our side because they had to find a pipe that was solid enough to hook the meter up to. So you're talking about he he did probably let's say two to three feet back. He survived solid enough to put the meter on your side. To my side because it was all rusted out. There was rust on on both sides of the meter. Like both pipes were pretty much rusted and gone. So you guys had to replace your pipe on your side and then put, replace the one going up to ours. In fact, they only went the. It was only like rust deposits that were holding our pipe together. That was that was pretty much it. <coughs> it was just... Where was the actual leak at? It was on. It was on your side. On the other side, it wasn't on ours. So it was on the. You got your meter, and ours is an older meter. So the 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 first initial thought was that the shutoff valve was in the the tin or in the thing, but it wasn't. It was all already on the outside. Um, but there was a leak on the, the water on your guys' side on that pipe side, on the elbow. And so it filled up with the water, but according to, it was a minor one. It, it was a really slow leak, and, and, but our whole ground was saturated. It didn't take very much 
we didn't have to water that little section all summer because it was just it was saturated. I mean, it would just would have reduced the time if that you know leak would have been fixed. It was on the city side. Um, you know, they would have been able to shut it off a lot quicker. I mean, yeah, we still would have got some water in there, but, um, you know, with that having to go in and fix city side and then get to our side, I mean, it just, it just <coughs> took longer, but, you know, if that would have been resolved. They would already, they could have went in and shut it off, and, you know, we still would have damage, but um, not as extensive as what it is now, but. And the, the pipe was severed underneath the disconnect inside the house. That's why the city had to come out and shut the water off. The, the disconnect valve was on the actual pipe and not on the main water line that came into the house. And so when that got severed, there was no way of stopping the water without disconnecting it. Which that's fixed now. I think we need to do something. I mean, it has been reported for five months and nothing had been done. Yeah. You know, from the right. list of this other paperwork, we need to get some yeah. people right. doing some jobs. Um, I'd make a motion to pay a third to half of that bill. Of which one? Davis gave us up the total bill. Just say. Seven seventy one fifty three. The uh, total bill is thirty three hundred dollars, say roughly eleven $1 hundred bucks. I mean, we're sitting here, and I mean, they got water running in their house for an hour because we can't shut or shut the water off. I, I don't think we really. I think we need to do something. Is insurance going to cover? Um, I mean, insurance. You have a claim. The insurance covered and. Everything but the Every, deductible. Everything, pretty much. They covered okay. everything but the deductible, the five hundred, and then they um, they're covering to replace the carpet. They're covering to re get everything repainted, and and the stuff. The the so personal items we haven't gone through the inventory list, but she said she would help us get those replaced. But if we pay Davis's bill and your deductible, that would be your all out of your out of pocket expenses. I'll make a motion to pay that. Second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? This motion carries 5 0. Thank you very much. Okay. Which leads us directly into the next issue right. under our superintendent update on the water meter situation. Um, when this occurred with Nick and LaDonna, LaDonna made the comment to me that we had several meters that we were estimating reads on because there was issues with the cans. I asked them to put together a list so that we could see what we had um, and then had directed Reuben to have um, the new water employees get started on getting the, the situation resolved. Um, so the list that you have, um, the first two have been taken care of. Third one's been taken. Yeah, third one's been taken care of. Um, but am I getting this right? It took us eight months to figure out we needed to dig out a can so we weren't estimating the water bill. No, look, I'm, 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 I am you. not. I'm not commenting on that. Well, am I not reading that right? Yeah. So it took eight months so somebody would pick up a show. This has, I had reported that things were being let go before Mel was resigned. And I had two employees and Steve, that two employees including myself. And I do, I did have other obligations to take care of this summer. And it did include fixing water leaks that were emergencies that actually shut off people's water service. Because that we have not had a water department since January of this year. Okay, so it looks to me like the first page has been dealt with. All of them? All the dirt ones. 
all the ones that say dirt on them have been pretty much taken care of. They've either done, figured out of whatever. The ones that have, um, the ones that say water on them, um, it's my understanding that they're going to work on those once a, a week until they get them resolved with the three that have patches on them being the last three to be worked on because they, they have patches. They're not leaking. One the, of the first things we need you to follow up on, please. Yes, ma'am. The dirt, you mean over the years, just dirt's covered up the meter? Moles have gone in there and dug around. Yeah. Or you just can't see the meter? Is that what we had one, yeah, we had one up Dan Bliss's meter. He had termites and tree roots, and they were, they filled the can, every year they filled the can completely full. I wasn't aware, I don't read that meter book, and he said that he usually goes out there and digs it out every year when I talk to him about it. So what do we do once it's covered up with dirt? We just you estimate it instead of bending over and cleaning the dirt out? I know. I dig it out. These were... Then why are some of these estimated for six to eight months? Well, so I, I do not read all of the meters, so I don't know why those were estimated. Well, regardless of what happened in the past, whether they were being decimated or not, it's being taken care of now. Okay, the ones that's got water is actually the leak. Yeah, there's a slow leak sorry. somewhere, but we don't like the ones that we found. We picked the one over at 5082 that's on Velma Kelch's. Right. It was an odd setup that even Steve had never seen before, and we got in there, and pretty much it's just a compression fitting. You screw it onto the meter and you just tighten it until it pushes it up against the rubber washer. What had happened is it loosened up over time. And it took us not very long, we pulled it out, we replaced everything, made it nice, clean again, squared it up, put it away. We're going to work on the one that, the one over here, we've got another one, we've got some that just have old valves that are leaking and we're going to have to dig down next to the main and shut the corp off because Otherwise, when you dig it open, if you do it wet, you're going to blow water everywhere. And if you can't get it done right away, it, you're just washing a big old hole full of water. <clears throat> Not all of them are just quick, easy fixes. You never, until you get it open, you don't know what you've got in there. So actually, there's only seven on this whole entire list that need to be taken care of. You right. got Kelch's done. Kelch's is finished. We're starting work on the Methodist Parsonage tomorrow, and we will start work on uh, 516 West 3rd, first part of next week. And if we run into any that are galvanized in the old PE line, we replace those, because the old PE line is real bad about wearing through and leaking. So we have to replace it out and galvanize. As we all know, you put a steel pipe in the ground full of water. It's only a matter of time. You said 515 West 3rd? There's not a 516 West 3rd. It should be. I bought in the list and it had 516 West 3rd on it. It's right there next to uh, Nick and Jamie Lawford's house. There's no 516 West 3rd on this, on this list. There's a 512 West 3rd. It should be 516 because there's no 512 West 3rd. That's West 3rd. Yeah. So it should be on or something. Yeah, there's not even West 3rd on it. 512. Well, it's on that handwritten plan. Yeah, it's on it. And like I said, we'll get to it as we can. But if we try to get to two to three a week and we run into a problem, then you just push that one off another three or four days. Or if we have to dig it all the way across, just like the leak we had over on West 4th, where we had to dig clear across the street, finally. So it's a, it's a process, and if you try to rush it, and you don't. Obviously, we are not the water department. I don't have the water experience that um, Mel and everybody else did, and I, I don't want to. I don't want to get into a situation where we have a bigger problem than that. Okay, well, you can work with Corey starting tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah
you need to get them to take care of it. And the best bet is, and I can work with the bond, we just we need somebody to hit all those houses at one time and make an assessment about the, the structure of those houses. The resolutions, they can be all adopted at the same time. So that way we're saving money and uh, doing it all together. Okay? Uh, a lot of times uh, you're, you're going to end up having to tear it down yourself. And, and probably then it gets taxed to the property and it's sold to the tax sales. That's what happens. actually people's belongings so um, the way I understand it from John there's two ways you guys can go we can an adopted ordinance that says that we're going to go in and we're going to clean it up or you can prosecute them so I just didn't know which direction you wanted to go with these three because they they have not made any type of an effort to clean it up after they have received the letters and um, their their date was September 28th to get it cleaned up. We actually extended it because one person called saying that she was going to clean it up and she was waiting for her, her husband to come back, but he never, they never cleaned it up. Doris went by and checked them and they're still about the same. So I just need to know which way you want to do it. Which way do you prefer we go? You know, adopting a resolution is going to be a little more expensive than prosecuting the court, but um, in my experience, if they're not, if you're not going to get them through court, you're not going to get them except the city doing it themselves. I mean, it, it's just people thumb their nose at, you know, when, when somebody, if the letter didn't work to scare them, I'm not sure going through court can do it unless they've got money. I mean, that the, so the court finds them, you know, typically the judges say, okay, I'll find you $200, but if you have it cleaned off by the end of this week, I will, you know, reduce that fine to $100. Sometimes they'll say, well, I don't have $100, so I'm not even going to attempt to clean it up. And then they don't clean it up. You don't have a jail, so <laughs> court can't find them in contempt and throw them in jail. I mean, that's just the reality. <laughs> so you're saying we need to adopt a code? Well, well you have, it's, you d you make findings of fact through a resolution, and you adopt the resolution finding that this person violated this ordinance, that this person was, was served with a letter on this date, that this person has failed to respond to the letter, and therefore you're giving them such and such time to commence cleaning up the property. If the property is not, if they have not commenced cleaning up the property by that date, then you're going to go in and do it yourself. I don't know what we do, just put it, do we bill them, or, does, I mean, it, it or is that just something just like we grass, It can be taxed. Okay. But then you get into the position of eventually it goes to the tax sale and you never get reimbursed. And so it's a no win, no win situation. <laughs> what you're saying? Well, part of my job is, is, is <laughs> risk management. What can we do that costs the least amount of money and is the least risky to everybody? <laughs> you know, we haven't had any of this go through court. You know, we've got a dog case set for the 12. 
Uh, we could just run it all through court next month, you know, and, 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 and find out. I guess we could try it. If it don't work, we'll go the other yeah. route. Yeah. yeah. That's a good idea. Find that. Make it fine. Try to find it. You know, a lot, a lot, if it's not like this, I'd have to check, but, you know, maybe what we need to do then is also change the ordinance that says, if you've been served a letter and you still haven't done it after 30 days, that's that's an additional violation. You know, I'd, I'd have to check. I can't remember whether your ordinance is contained there. But, yeah. but again, you know, people realize when they don't have money, you know, sometimes it's better off than having money because, what do you, you can't, there's no such thing as a letter's prison. I mean, what, you just, what do you do in a situation like that? that then, then the... Then the citizens are wasting money on attorney's fees for me to prosecute something that's just going to cause more headaches. That's why. Okay, so the direction is to bring them to court and see what happens, and then yep. if that doesn't work, we'll go the other direction. Can okay, you put on the maybe new business for doing looking at that code again? Sure. Um, we had, um, or we have an issue with a payment plan that we currently have. I am going to be purposely vague because it deals with a private individual and we don't really have an executive session reason to be able to take this into executive sessions. So, this payment agreement dates back to 2009. It was about... $1,750 at the time. Um, the individual in question pays, the, the current bill is paid, and whatever they feel like they can add to it, they do. Some months it's nothing. It's been paid down to about $650. Um, my thought is, is that we need to set a time frame for the rest of this to be dealt with or shut this individual's water off. I think that seven years is more than enough time to take care of $1,650, $1,700. But I don't want to make that call. I want counsel's input. Well, I'd agree with you. It needs to be a set amount. Whatever that amount is, I don't know, but I think it needs to be a set amount every month above the current bill. Does it work of just have jobs? I don't know if she works or she has been <coughs> disability. The way the payment agreement's working now is that we take the we take the bill and we round it to the nearest 100 form, and then we divide that by like so. Let's say if I owed 350. We round it to 400. We give you four payments to pay off the 350. For the majority of the people, it seems to it seems to work, because you in the past you had some people that would just pay 10 dollars or 15 dollars, and it would go on for like a whole year for them to try to pay off this 300. For them, for this one individual, she she has has expressed that that there is not that she can't do that, and she can only pay what she can pay. Uh, delinquent wise, she probably owes three fifty, and her current is three hundred. So total, it's probably six hundred and fifty dollars. So if you give her four payments, I mean, if you run that three fifty to four 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 hundred, that would give her four payments to to do it. I understand that times are tight and everybody's struggling. But it's my impression that there isn't a whole lot of effort being made to get the balance taken care of. And that's just my impression. Plus, then what's going to happen to her next month's bill? <laughs> well, instead of, instead of dividing it by four, if we divide it, you gave her six payments. Or that individual, whatever. I mean, that'd be a little less seas, and then it'd be taken care of in six months. I mean, is that guy that feels like that? I think that gives, us a good, that gives us a good time frame. I mean, that right. enough time to 
take care is of it. This, yeah. Is this six fifty the total past due? No, no. The, the total past due is about. It's actually. I, mean, I don't necessarily need to know exact. Is it three hundred fifty dollars or yeah, is it three? It's around three hundred fifty dollars. So that and and they're paying their current bill Correct. plus whatever else. So Correct. So yeah. You're so you're talking fifty. Five bucks in the extra month. Right. And to, to, to just give you guys an example, your what she what she usually does is she let's say she owes two hundred dollars. Well, she'll give you two hundred and ten dollars, and you're going to put ten dollars on the delinquent part, and she gives you the two hundred. I mean, she pays her current. That that's that's the average of what she's been paying. It's about ten dollars, five dollars, twenty dollars. Well, it needs to be taken care of a little quicker than that. I'd say break it down into six payments and just that's what it's going to be. Okay. And then they give you six months. Let's say that's for a mobile After all the time, yeah. Is this one of the old accounts? Mm -hmm. It is. Pam has, Pam has actually gone through all the accounts and she has sent out letters to all the old accounts explaining the new payment agreement that you have to round it and we're only going to take four payments or five payments on your bill. Everyone has pretty much agreed to it. I mean, there's been a couple where we've had to kind of help them out a little bit, but the majority of them haven't griped too much about them at all, just to take care of it. Okay, this bill you're talking about, it is down to 650 now? That counts her current. It is down to 650. And it started out at 1750? It started out at 1750, around there. Do we need to make a motion for that? No. I mean, it, it sounds like the staff has been working with everybody anyway, but I think we okay. all just wanted to bring this particular case here. Okay. It, it's more of a policy discussion, which we want. Okay. And you don't do some of the other. We've, we've looked at all of them. I mean, Pam and I, we've gone through all of them. We Now you have what I would probably call repeat offenders where they get their current payment agreement paid off and then they put their next bill on your payment agreement. But they, they get them paid off. So, I mean, I just call them a repeat. Carry them. But I mean, you're saying whatever's in four months it's taken care of. Right. In four okay. months it's it's taken care of and then they put that next four month that bill, they'll put that on a payment plan and then take care of the rest of them and then they'll put that on a payment plan. But I mean I just call them repeat offenders and they pay. Um, okay. well, taken care of. The, the majority of them the majority of them are because now they're they're really getting told when they make the payment agreement that it has to be something that they can do. And the dates have to be the dates they can do because if they miss that date, we 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 still call them as a courtesy, but we shut them off. If you miss that date for your payment agreement, we, we don't give them like a week or two weeks and, and stuff like that. I have seen a list lately. There used to be some pretty good sizable. Are they coming down any? Um. Yes and no. Here's this is your. Pam ran you guys at the, your delinquent list, um, and this one she ran it before she updated the current cycle. Last year, she, last month she updated the current cycle, so then of course everybody was delinquent because the current cycle was updated. So this is your list as of before the last billing. Okay, so these are the truly people that are delinquent. Everyone in yellow is on a payment agreement. Okay. Um, everyone in blue, we shut them off when we made them, we made them pay or they moved or something like that. There, there's still a couple that are, there's still a couple that have a lot. Some of it, I, I, the way they explain it to me, I don't see them ever paying it off. I mean, so there, there is a really big one and I mean, I don't see you guys ever getting that collected from her, but part of, but she's still paying. I mean, it, it's gone down further than what when it started. But she's still paying. Can we get a, one of them listed or one? Yeah, you sure can. In our package, please. Yeah.
couple of them. everything off. If you miss the payment, we send out the electricity and, and they shut it off. And then once it gets shut off, they have to bring it, they have to pay everything up and bring it current. And just because there's people out there watching not the video, but this is this is old accounts before. Correct. Yes, right. Correct. Those are those are old ones that years, eight, nine, ten years old. So nobody can come in today and not pay their bill for three months they want to be Right. To, to do the payment, you have to, the way I understand is that you have to live here for a whole year before you can even be eligible for the payment agreement and not have any delinquent or late payments to get on. Pam does a really good job of explaining it to them when they come in and to explain it. She's even highlighting the parts saying that if we don't do it, we're going to have to shut it off. And when I'm approving I'm questioning things, and, and actually that's where we came into the $100 a month when LeBron started. I said, you know, we need to quit letting the customers decide how long it's going to take to pay the bill and, and set a standard for the whole community. Well, so, Donna, can you use a set that the state set off to pay the bill? Yeah. Even, like, even if they're current? Um, I mean, I'll even forget, even if they're a current citizen, do they still be I don't think so. It has to be after they I think they have to be out, and, but I would have to check that. I don't think so. Protective equipment testing lab. He said it was the annual testing for the electric department. It it went over his budget by one hundred and sixty seven dollars and twenty five cents. So the bill is twenty one sixty five sixty seven point one sixty seven twenty five. So we just need somebody to say so you approve it. So we can. Pay it. So move second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? carries for one okay that was on the truck correct mm -hmm. on that pole yeah, yeah. of course I know okay new business bringing the mow mowing for code violation in-house had conversations with at least one of you 
talking about whether or not it makes sense to bring the mowing in-house. Um, I think it makes sense. I think that we can save the community money um, by doing it that way. I mean, there'll be some equipment costs if we were to do it, and we can sit down and, and run some numbers on it, but just something for us to be thinking about and make a decision on before the next season rolls around. How long does the current contract go for? Any idea? No. Just the summer? I think it's just the summer. So is the summer officially over, or is it still going? Or? No, we're still cutting. There's still weed violations. We're still sending out weed letters. Probably frost. I, mean. I, would, I would think so. Usually we stop doing it about the end of October is when we've done it in the past. Okay. So. You must not have done a letter. About this one. You want me to fix that? So is it something that we want to consider? Yes. I, I think we need to do it. Yeah. I, think, okay. I think it'd take another summer hand to do it or right. summer employee to do I'd it. I'd rather pay somebody I 10 or $12 an hour to do it than well, yeah. pay out $100 an hour. I also think you're probably going to look at a, have to look at a, a, a large wiggly mower. Right. Something that yeah. will eat them big weed. So, okay. Yeah. Can you make a note to put it on the agenda for the first meeting in January for discussion? No. Does that work for everybody? Mm hmm. Glad she'll remember because I won't. That's why I'm asking her. Because neither will I. Okay. Um, old business. We also had some conversation with at least one of you with regards to the possibility of bringing our trash service in house. Um, don't know if that's something that we want to do. It's something I've started pulling numbers together on so that we would have an idea of what the initial startup costs would be to do it. Um, and then, you know, what the income is at the current rates and moving forward from there. I don't know if that's something that council wants to consider. I think it's something that we need to consider, but. Um I mean, it's something that we're not going to be able to dive off into right away. But I do think that we do need to look at the trash service. I mean, we constantly have written complaints. We constantly get hit on the street about complaints. Um, I would talk to Nisley. They, they would honor their same numbers basically as what they did. We have what they presented to us. It doesn't actually happen. Do we have a current list of any violent complaints or anything? I think we need to look at doing something different. And I even talked to Nisley that instead of doing anything, a lengthy contract, maybe just doing a yearly contract, which they do a lot of anyway. And that would give us time to go over numbers and, and see if that's something that we want to get into as far as in-house service. I really, I disagree a little, little bit with you, Troy. I understand we've got some problems. But I have problems. I realize we've got problems. And they're not getting issues. But when we renewed that contract, Somebody dropped the ball. There was supposed to have been an attached sheet with that, as you all remember, on all the things that we wanted fixed. And that never happened. So I think before we can make any drastic changes, we need to sit down and give a get a get a get a, get a, get a time back there in line and get that sheet put together and issue it to the trash. I disagree with you, Bob, because the complaints we get ain't about the equipment, it's about the service. And it, it's our responsibility to make sure that the taxpayers are getting their money for it. And, and they're not getting it. I mean, you drive by the dumpsters around town, they got holes in them, there's trash out of them. There's, I mean, people are constantly complaining about it. Um, you know, when we put in that contract with about the complaints, the number of complaints, we're over, we're over that. 
uh, the complaint. The complaints are being addressed. Correct me if I'm wrong, but aren't the aren't the complaints being addressed? Terry, are you you're addressing all of the complaints? Yes. If we know about it, I mean, you're this office is being they're faxing because I I was there when they came in. We don't we don't we don't get many faxes out there. Uh, some of some of those are really old. You know, last year. Terry, Terry what? It, can we get some of these issues that council's talking about if addressed? Can we if, get the if things? They'll tell me what they are. So far, I haven't, I haven't learned a thing. I mean, when your dumpsters have holes in them and you got trash laying all over, yeah, and people well, are complaining about trash dumping we, down the alleys. I think it's self-explanatory. Well, we, we can't talk, really blame. We can't really blame the trash service for trash being around the alleys. I mean, we have no idea whether they did it or whether a stray cat, a stray dog did it, or some kid went by and just decided to be ornery and throw it all over the place. No, I mean we don't know. None of us were there, so we can't really say. We're taking one person's word over it. If my guy, if my guys drop something in the alley, excuse they me, pick it up. I didn't hear you. If my guys drop something in the alley, they pick it up. But if we're just if we're just going down the alley and there's stuff, you know, scattered for fifty or sixty feet, uh, I don't, you know, our job ends somewhere. Well, I'm with Bob on this one. I think we need to to look at it, and try to address some of this, and get this thing fixed up. If it doesn't, We've been if it doesn't get fixed, Jerry, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid nowhere. I'm going to have to go the other way. You know, but we just need to get things done. You know, and if if we need to improve communication, well, I, then that's what we need to yeah, do. I just assumed when I came here tonight that somebody had had probably made out that list that was supposed to be with the contract. I'd have to look for a copy. I don't, do you have a copy? I don't. I, I don't. The, the actual contract does not have a list. Uh, no, yeah, we I did make a, a list. We made though. a list here, right there. John did, or I think it was. Well, I know there's no contract with that. There's no list with that contract. I know. I know. That's one of the things. Somebody was on the list. This is a list. Before John left, her and I went through the folder that was in the office, and I made a copy of the contract. And when I came to the council meeting. Last time, the copy I had made of the contractor, which was provided me, was even different than what Troy had in his pack at the council table. Troy gave me his contract. There are slight differences, but in neither of the contracts is there any list of what needs to be for, what needs to be updated. So I, I don't know where that would be if that is not in these the city office stuff. Okay, well then can we do this? Can we put together a list right now and have LaDonna send it out in a letter so that we know what we're dealing with? That's that fine. Yeah, that sure. Okay, go. Uh, I think all the dumpsters need to be fixed so they quit having holes all over in it. I mean, this is not a six month to do list either. Actually, the only one this, I this know is a to do list now. The only one I know of at the, at the moment that's got a hole in it is, is the one at Marshall's. I just haven't got there to get it yet. Okay, like mine, you traded mine out. Mine had lids on it. You never brought me back one with lids. What's that? At the shortstop. You took my dumpster because it had a hole and you're going to fix it. We gave you a thing. Yeah, we? so you brought me a nice dumpster, but it has yeah. no lids. And I have a lot of small trash. So it blows out. Those in spare fields, and they're mad at me. I, I thought that somebody's taking the lids off of it. No, you never brought me back my real dumpster. You just brought me a different one. That, that might be. I don't know. What about yeah. the appearance of the trucks? Yeah, as I recall, it's had. Well, it doesn't, yeah, that's one thing. I've, I've got several. No, 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 with the noise, he said that he heard it the other morning at five o'clock in the morning. I, you know, I don't. Are you right? Well, I'm typing. Okay. Okay. I'm just waiting for you guys to say this is it, and I'm just typing evidence. Well, what? Okay. What? Going off of what Marshall just said and talking to you directly, one of some of the complaints that I've gotten have been the appearance of the vehicles. Yeah. Well. <clears throat> You know, it's, that's just mainly cosmetics. But I know they knew. Uh, I know they. I know they need to brought up to where they look better. I, I don't have any heartburn about that. Well, the oil leaks need to be fixed. 
I do have some that mm -hmm. ways to me about oil and yeah, stuff right there's oil all over. in people's driveways and alleys. And yeah, well, we pretty much got that all taken care of. Except except for a day I found a, a seal bed in a differential. It started dripping today. I mean, I know what was the last complaint there about just the trash cans and stuff being the put back. Trash cans all over. Yeah. 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 I think I've explained this about trash cans. Uh, if they're empty, they have a real tendency to blow around. After, if, it's, if it's windy, we lay them on the ground and put the lids beside them. Because if they, if they blow over, uh, they're going to go you don't know where it is. And we've, been, we've actually been accused of stealing cans because of the wind. Okay, is there anything else? Also, they need to, even if it looks like it's empty, to go check it. Because like my dumpster, my diesel dumpster, unless I call you half the time, they don't dump it. And it might be three-fourths full. They're supposed to be dumping it. Oh, they are. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And I know some other people that have trash that that have a dumpster and it, it's not always full, but it doesn't always get dumped there. Unless it's overflowing, they don't get dumped. Yeah. Well, actually, they're supposed, they those are supposed to get checked <coughs> at least once a week. If there's a six inches of paper in the bottom of it, they might they might go by on that. They're not Still supposed to do anything. That's right. Yeah. I mean, if and that's the only thing in paying. town where you don't have any the trash service. It's, you don't have any. They are. It's just all yeah. given, whether you do your job or not. And that's the problem. That's what I mean. It, this is not an equipment issue. It's a service issue, guys. I agree. And we've we've addressed this for the last six to seven months. Maxfield's running a different service over there. They're, they're having great luck. We have nothing but complaints all the time. And if they're not written in here, they're hammering you on the street. I never hear any of them. Well, and we I, send I you can't. every one that gets faxed and yeah. gets to yeah. us. Yeah. So you're you're hearing ours because they yeah. get in here and the girls are back immediately. If there's, there's some out there on the street, somebody's getting their hair. Has he got a copy of these? And he gets a copy know? of those because well, he faxes them back well, to us. That's the one thing that when people come up to me and tell me about these complaints, I tell them you need to go to the city office and file a complaint. Yeah, or call me, or you know, or call you. Right. No, maybe you can come down. If we miss somebody, well, regardless, they need to let somebody know so instead of just coming to us. It's a matter of professionalism. If you if you're paid to do a job, you do the job. You shouldn't have complaints. Every every meeting in, in a perfect meeting. world, we're never going to get complaints. But this isn't a perfect world, and I understand well, that these things need to be addressed. Yeah. Well, if if, okay. if somebody okay. calls me and yeah. we've missed something, the, uh, we okay. just go get it. I'm going to help Ladonna read back over the list of things that we have to go into the letter. I need to add one more. Okay. Need to pay attention around the alleys, not to drive in the people's yards. Not to be run over coverts, mashing coverts on the end, which we have one that needs to be replaced at Galen Davis. Mash completely flat. Mm -hmm. I got fixed dumpsters with holes in them, uh, the appearance of the trucks, the noise of the trucks, the oil leaks need to be fixed, the lids need to be put back on the trash can or replaced, whichever. Uh, check the dumpsters to make sure that they are getting dumped and prove their <clears throat> customer service. Pay attention around the alleys to not run in the yards or on, on the curb curbs. Okay, I think on the lids on the trash cans, I think you actually want bins. Bins, okay. bins not cans. So, how long do you want to give it? I can send the list, but how? What's the time frame? I guess that's what I'm saying. I say 30 get. days. It must be in June. Okay.
okay, what's going to happen in 30 days? We're done? We looked at different services. Is that, is that answer to you guys? Terry, is that going to be enough time? No. Because them roads are on, you know, them trucks are, <clears throat> for four days a week at least, those trucks are either on the route or on the way to the landfill. So how much, how much time are you thinking? Uh, I really don't know. Some of that stuff's pretty simple. Uh, and some of it's kind of complicated, too. <clears throat> what if we go 60 days? Does that seem like a reasonable compromise? Three months would probably work oh, out well, better, or by the first of the year. That's way too long. <laughs> Census, folks. I still don't put on 30 days. I'm, I'm, I'm inclined to go with 60. I'll go for the three months. Three months? Yeah. What do you say? Mm -hmm. Three months. 90, 90 days. days. 90 days, right? Yeah, first of the year. It's whatever you got. Do we need to vote on it, or what do you want to do? No, I just I need a consensus. I so, yeah. yeah. Marshall? I'll go with Bob on this one right here. So. Okay, so we've got two at 90, one at 30. Here, 90. Marshall? Guess it don't matter what I vote. Okay, 90 days then. Okay, and, and what, if we have any complaints, okay, lay it out. Okay, if, if as a council member you receive a complaint, I want you to call the office and let the staff know so that they can write up a complaint, even though it's secondhand, yeah. and so that we can get them... We'll get them faxed, it'll Terry. It would be greatly appreciated if you'd call me, because I'm the guy that's going to fix it. No. They'll let you know with facts. You'll get it anyway if, if we yeah. call the office. They'll yep. pass it on to you. Okay. Yeah. Well. <clears throat> okay. Any other questions, or is there any other discussion? Well, that'll, that'll put it first part of January. It'll be January 1. So January 1. Pretty January. much. So if everything's not fixed by then, we'll start looking at other options. We'll check to see if it's fixed. Hold on. If, if most of that's taken care of by then, and it stays that way, we should have less and less complaints. <clears throat> Business, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Opposed?